everybody, Dr. D again. This is just a quick video to take you through the syllabus. I want to make sure you're comfortable with what's required of you for the course. And I'm going to screen share here. And we're just going to go to our homepage again. Get to the syllabus through here, of course, or you can just go under content and go into course introduction. Or it's right here, syllabus. Let's take a look at the syllabus. Your general information up top there. Um, it's an introductory course, but I tell my students you need to have a strong foundation in problem solving skills. And it's good to have been exposed to high school chemistry to be well prepared. Otherwise, you should be starting in Chem 1010, then migrating into Chem 1110. Um, so here's the structure of the course. You've got these modules. You can see that all the exams have two chapters on them, except for exam two. It's a big, long, complicated chapter. Those are your five exams. There's the textbook, third edition. Um, there is an ebook option. Smart work is required. It's part of your grade, as you'll see the grading down below. Of course, you need a calculator, you need goggles for lab, you need a calculator for lab. You'll need the lab manual. However, that is being provided this year. That, that's based on the lab, I'm not sure. So there's five. Online exams during the semester worth 100 points each. Of course, you need a device for taking those like you do for any of the material for this course. It's 25 to 35 multiple choice. Typically tends to be 25. There's no makeup exams without specific documentation. Missed exams not going to affect you because you get to drop your lowest. So don't think that you drop your lowest because you did poorly. Use that in case you literally do miss an exam. No one plans on missing an exam. Um, there will be nine online 15 point quizzes. You get to drop your two lowest. Only seven are counted there. Um, and those are simple five to 10 multiple choice questions. Furthermore, you can actually use the final exam, which cannot be dropped to replace a second hourly exam. So for some reason you, you miss two exams or you miss one and do really poor on one, you're still okay because the final exam can be reused to replace that. Um, there's no extra credit for the course and grades are gonna be assigned based on percentages. And here's the breakdown, it's the same scale I've been using for years. But I always tell my students, never give up because at the end of the year, I'll look at things like your participation in the discussions, interaction with me and signs of improvement. And let's say you finish up with a 79%. I might very well give you that B if you did all the discussions and you did a good job, you came to me for help and you did really good on the like the fourth and fifth exam. If you finish with a, 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 an 89 and you never did the discussions and you never came for help, you're getting a B plus. That's where this comes into play. Okay, so that's, you wanna make sure you do that. I also look at smart work. If you typically didn't do much of the smart work and you're borderline, then, then I'm not gonna cut you a break, okay? You'll never get less than what the scale tells me, so you'll have nothing to argue with me about. If you get an 89, you get a B plus. But I do look and see, and that's usually the way I use minuses. Boosting people up, if you have a C plus, I'll boost you up to a B minus. If you go through the class and you're a pretty good student, you wind up with a B minus, lots of times I do away with the minus. But if you wind up with a B minus and you only did 50% of the smart work and you never came for help and missed a bunch of discussions, you're getting the B minus, okay? The final exam uh, will most likely be comprehensive. That changes from year to year. Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned, you can use, be used to replace that. As far as this, you can read this. You know, the exams are gonna be online, uh, open up for a certain amount of periods, same with the quizzes. Make sure you get a single grade for lecture and lab. So make sure you register for a lab. Make sure you're visiting your lab in person. Labs are in person. You need goggles, calculator. Um, once again, I do look at the participation in discussions and assigning final grades. Uh, make sure you hand do everything on time. You know, smart work is due at a certain time. Okay, your quizzes are due. Your, okay. Pay attention to your drop dates. They're not listed here right now because it changes from semester to semester and I don't have those yet. Um, some information about uh, academic honesty. You know, you cannot be Googling stuff 
why you take exams, that considered cheating. You can't be texting other classmates, working in groups, any of that stuff. Um, you're better off failing a single hourly exam than you are getting caught cheating because getting caught cheating could result in going to the academic appeals committee. And um, that will be a permanent mark on your record. And you could be even, you know, get his, could fail the course or you can get, uh, you know, suspended from school, whatever. So the consequences are much worse than just failing one exam. You need to have a C minus or better to move on to Gen Ken 2. Um, and then the rest of it is your basic statements for any course that you can look through academic misconduct. Again, Title IX statements, True Group Pledge, and all of that. So your grade basically is coming from 400 points for the exams because you take five exams, you drop one. 15 point quizzes, there's seven of them that are counted, two are dropped, so it's only 105 points. Lab is typically worth 165 points. Sometimes that fluctuates a little bit. Smart work, it's about 6% of your grade, about 45 points is usually the way that I make it. Final exam is the same as any hourly exam. You have a total of 815 points. So it's not hard to figure out what your grade is at any time during the semester. Just take your point total, divide it by the point total we've had during the semester and you know where you stand percentage wise. Um, with that, I think I'm gonna stop my screen share and say to you, if you have any questions about syllabus, the structure, anytime during the semester, your exam, feel free to contact me and I can get back to you with um, an indication of where you stand in the class. With that, um, that's all I have to say. Have a good day.